This is the third episode to cover the request from Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san about which orchids have long-lasting blooms. I would like to draw your attention to the disclaimer that I had in the intro to episode 1, but to keep this video at a reasonable length, the ticker will repeat the disclaimer, which is important when it comes to my judgment of long-lasting blooms and the conditions I grow my orchids in. Episodes 1 and 2 are linked in the description in case you would like to check out the recommended orchids that feature in the genera starting from A through D and E through P partially. So in this video we are going to complete the orchids I have experience with in the genera starting with the letter P. I don't want to get ahead of myself make this video too long so I'm just going to stick with the letter P see how it goes and then maybe we will be able to complete the series in this video. So let's check out more orchids with long lasting blooms. Thank you so much for being here for clicking on this video. I appreciate your time and support as well as a thumbs up if you don't mind. Please know that at any time you can add orchids that you know have a long-lasting bloom duration within the alphabetical letters we are covering in this episode. Seeing as I'm only able to speak on the orchids that I'm growing or have grown, any additional recommendations are most welcome for all to read and draw inspiration from. Kicking off this episode is the genus Paphiopedalum. But seeing as Phragmopediums are also slipper orchids, I'm going to combine these two genera into this section. I'll just show you some slippers that I grow, which I have come to appreciate for their long-lasting blooms. All my slippers have to tolerate the same temperature range of 14 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius with dappled shade or deep shade, depending on the time of year. While I grow the majority of my orchids outdoors when temperatures permit, my slipper orchids do not go outdoors unless I'm flushing them or filming them for repots. So in general, slipper orchids do have a long-lasting bloom period. Two months is not out of the norm and longer depending on conditions. There are also sequential blooming slipper orchids which will give a bloom duration of up to four months, if not longer. I do not have any of these, so again, if you have any sequential blooming slipper orchids and would like to share, please leave the name of the orchid and the bloom duration in the comments. Thank you. I can speak on Paphiopedalum delanatii, which for me has a bloom duration of two months easily. My Paphiopedalum delanatii blooms for me from February all the way through to early April. I have been told that there are fragrant Delanatii out there, but I do not have one that is fragrant. So <laughs> one thing I have noticed with this orchid is that if it gets a little draft while in bud, the bud will blast, which happens to many orchids. But seeing as we're speaking of slipper orchids, the Delanatii appears to be a little bit more vulnerable to drafts. And that is just what happened to me in 2024. But other than that, it is a reliable bloomer. Paphiopedalum iona is one that has a vigorous growth habit with multiple fans and each fan will bloom like clockwork. A single bloom coming out of each fan, but it is not unusual for this orchid to bloom on all mature fans at the same time, giving the orchid a beautiful look with all the funky blooms around for two months at least. This iona blooms for me from December all the way through to February. And then I have an American hybrid, I think, not sure, just going to call it that because they are very common and are all around, easily found in garden centers. I would call this a medium to large size one because it is pretty vigorous when it comes to growing multiple fans and has more of a strap leaf to it and the bloom duration is approximately two months. Each fan, once the lead matures, will also bloom. This one blooms for me usually around February all the way through to April. And then I have Paphiopedalum mint chocolate, which has only bloomed once for me so far. It arrived as a seedling in 2018 and it took a long time to mature. It bloomed with a single bloom for two months and then it has taken two years to mature a fan, which I do believe will bloom for us later in its growth cycle. So this is an example of a slipper orchid that will only bloom every two years when a fan matures. Being a very slow grower in the category of slow growing orchids as is, this orchid does take a long time to mature a fan for that fan to bloom or the next one to bloom, but it is a pretty little bloom. When this one did bloom for me, it was from January all the way through to the end of February. 
And then we have Paphiopedlum Lindley Kupovitz, which is a vigorous orchid that grows multiple fans very quickly, making for a beautiful bushy looking mottled leaf orchid, even while not in bloom. I hope to one day have two blooms at the same time, once the other leads mature, but for now, a single bloom is what I get from the main lead, and it also lasts two months without any problems. Bonus when it comes to this one, it is fragrant. It resembles deliciously crushed raspberries with a sprinkle of sugar, and that is what will make you want to visit this orchid again and again and again. My only issue with this orchid is mealybugs. Once a spike is on its way, I have to make sure that no mealybugs have a chance to settle in the fuzz, or else the bloom will be smaller and very, very short-lived. This one usually blooms for me around end spring all the way through to mid-summer. Papiopedlum spicerianum is one of my favorites, <laughs> while not fragrant. These blooms are just amazing to look at. I always see the funkiest little faces and expressions thanks to the details of these blooms. Just love it. It is also one of those that will grow multiple fans as the orchid matures, and eventually one pot can showcase multiple blooms, making for a wonderful two months of fun and pulling faces back at the blooms. <laughs> its bloom period is normally fall all the way through to midwinter. Just as we are leaving the best time of year for growing orchids, this one comes through and puts a cheeky little smile on our faces. It's just wonderful. Not in my collection anymore, but I wanted to add Fragmapedium Memoria Garen Weaver. While this orchid is cold tolerant, I lost mine because it is not that cold tolerant. Other winters were not as harsh for long periods of time, but there was one winter that had six weeks of dull, cold conditions, and this orchid did not survive those conditions. Yes, I left it to grow outdoors, because it can handle low temperatures, <laughs> up to a point. Once upon a time, it did handle five degrees Celsius lows. However, it needs sunshine to warm it up again if grown outdoors in those temperatures. And that was an end winter, early spring of six weeks of gloom and then doom for my Phragmopedium Memoria Garen Weaver. Still, I loved seeing the blooms, enjoyed them for two months, which coincided with the time period of early spring and throughout. Even though she's not fragrant, she certainly has a lot of detail that can be appreciated, and she is very vigorous with multiple fans that can also bloom, and then the whole thing is a beautiful display. Moving on to the Phalaenopsis genus. These orchids are well known for the longevity of their blooms, and I'm going to be very general with this category because the options are endless, but I'm also going to show some images of my novelty hybrids and species Phalaenopsis, which commonly fall under the category of summer bloomers. While these summer blooming fowls are not as long lasting with their blooms as their complex hybrid counterparts, three months for a single bloom is not unusual, and many summer blooming orchids have sequential spikes, so the bloom duration can also extend that to their complex hybrid amigos, which can be in bloom for six months. Many of my summer bloomers have bloomed for that long, and if the blooms fade, then during the warmer months of the year, another secondary flush of blooms will add another couple of months to the bloom show, as well as the fragrance experience. The fragrances of summer blooming Phalaenopsis range from Tupperware plastic with a hint of sugar, all the way through to the fragrance of a candy store, as well as intense gorgeous notes of cinnamon sugar, and in some cases, a hint of chili. These are the layers of fragrances that I have had the pleasure to experience with my summer bloomers, but there's one thing that I would like to add. All my Phalaenopsis across the board do not get enough light during the winter in order to perform well. My summer bloomers do not get enough light during the summer in order to perform well. So just know that in general, across the board, if you're growing Phalaenopsis orchids, they need a lot of light, even if they are the complex hybrid fowls. They will bloom with less light, but the colors won't be as vibrant. The spikes won't be as abundant. So without burning your leaves, give all your Phalaenopsis as much light as possible in order for them to perform really, really well for you. Mine are struggling, and for all the reasons I've just mentioned that I cannot provide for mine, they are struggling, and they're not quite sure if they want to stay or if we're headed over the rainbow bridge. Do not expose your summer blooming Phalaenopsis to temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius, no matter your media. They are reliable bloomers, and at least one or two of these highly fragrant orchids needs to be in every collection, just because, oh, 
delicious. However, if you're not able to source these novelty or species Phalaenopsis because of how expensive they can be, look for the mini Phalaenopsis out there which are darling. And often you can now find these little ones with the most divine fragrance, which is an absolute game changer when it comes to complex hybrids Phalaenopsis. And they are affordable, they don't take up much space and bloom for months while pushing a fragrance beating any air freshener on the market. While I do recommend to have one or two summer bloomers in your collection, let me just say there is nothing like an abundant bloom spike that has all these tiny little fragrant blooms compared to a single bloom that will last for a very long time with a gorgeous fragrance. I mean, the two actually work hand in hand. However, the mini Phalaenopsis complex hybrids that are fragrant are now on the market. I cannot recommend them enough. I actually have four of them just because of their fragrance. I have yet to get them to bloom again, but I have four. A miniature orchid that is so close to my heart because it grows naturally in Kenya is Podangus dactyloceras. These dainty and fragile blooms belie how tough they are. In my dry conditions, I would have thought that they would frazzle within a week just because of their appearance. But no, two months of these blooms is what you can enjoy when this orchid is in bloom. While I'm struggling to keep mine hydrated in my dry conditions, if you can keep your humidity above 70% consistently, then this orchid will grow very well mounted. I have not had success with it in a pot because the roots do not have any plans of growing into a pot. It is a tough one to get to grow well in a pot, so mounted is the best course of action. Keep it in bright shade at all times and do not let the temperature temperatures drop below 20 degrees Celsius. While mine has to tolerate 14 degrees Celsius, it does not like it. Every winter, I am nervous as to whether mine will come through safely into the spring or not. These blooms are so mesmerizingly beautiful, even though they don't have a fragrance. It is just amazing to see them in real life. And on top of that, this orchid blooms throughout the warmest months that I have, and that would be the summer months. Bang smack in the middle of summer. I just cannot with this orchid. I really don't want to lose it. This one being my 2.0. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Anyway, moving on. Pro Catavola Golden Peacock. My oh my. When my collection was still in its infancy, I bought this orchid and she was my staple when it came to orchids that appear to be in bloom forever. She's such a reliable bloomer, a vigorous grower, and pretty much every growth will bloom. A spike will hold on to its blooms for three months without issues. Imagine that in my dry climate. When you look at the delicate appearing blooms, then as new growths mature, a new spikes forms again, and more blooms appear while the older spikes are still going, extending the bloom show even longer. She is not fragrant, but for a medium-sized orchid that grows nicely upright and doesn't hog the windowsill, it is fantastic to have as a houseplant. It handles lower light levels and will still bloom, with less blooms, mind you, but still, if there's any orchid that can handle indoor conditions with lower light levels and still bloom, and it is not a Phalaenopsis, this one is it. Now, let me not exaggerate, because when I say forever, of course, this orchid does not bloom forever, but when she starts getting into bloom, which in my case is midsummer, and she continues to spike, it can go all the way to fall and into early winter. I'm going to generalize my Prostechia genus as well. I have three. All of them have long-lasting blooms and all of them are fragrant. The fragrance ranges from super elegant talcum powder, as is the case of my Garciana Alba, which has its main bloom period midwinter through to early spring, and then a second smaller flush of blooms end summer. My Radiata has the most common fragrance of Prostechias, which is Honeysuckle. It is strong enough to be noticeable while close to the orchid, but it is not as intense as the next one that I will cover after I tell you that the Radiata blooms in summer through to mid-fall, which, if all goes well and left to bloom out, can easily be two months. Now, the Cochleata, that one can be considered headache-inducing when it comes to its fragrance. The Honeysuckle mixed with burnt molasses fragrance is heavy and intense in the air. So know that you need a large room if the fragrance gets too intense or open a window to let some of it escape. Prostechia size can vary from the ground cover style as you see with my Garciana Alba to medium size as you see with my Radiata and Cochleata. 
although radiata can be considered large depending on your interpretation of what you would consider large. Eventually, prostachios will fill a pot and a mount very quickly. These orchids are vigorous, growing into specimen size very quickly. It is a wonderful genus to grow. It makes everyone that grows prostachia feel like an accomplished orchid grower. <laughs> Keep them in bright shade, and if you can with the humidity above 70% all year round, that will not only make you a very happy prostachia grower, but it will also avoid the leaf tip dieback due to the lack of humidity. So I don't want to drag this series out for too long, but my database with the letter P was quite extensive, so please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, this way you won't miss the final installment when episode 4 airs. I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you found something you liked and consider adding to your collection. Thank you so much Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san for the request. All episodes will be in the respective descriptions. Thank you so much for watching, I truly appreciate your support. By watching to the end, also I get to wish you a wonderful day on the condition though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye!